and another e-bike battery for your entertainment. There's nothing on telly anyway. Let's just come into my possession from customer. Uh, I don't know what it is. The customer didn't know. Didn't even know what voltage. Let's assume it's a lithium ion. It's similar to the high long one I did before, but much larger. Let's get that. There's uh, a phone number on there. What does that say? The electric bike. Quick look around. Do charging ports for holding on to the frame maybe where's the discharge ports ah that looks like it and final side on off switching key nothing on the bottom warranty void if removed that's a challenge so first order of business so the outlet ports check for voltage The usual complaint on this, it won't charge. The customer said they've been stuck for about two years. Let's plug that into the outlets. 0 0.4 volts. Mm, not a good start. Ah, yes, um, charger. The customer brought in a charger with this one, and it was a 19 volt one which was obviously for a laptop so there's no charger with this either so no way of means of charging it but I have got means of opening it let's take the screws off so this battery pack inside is connected to both halves this for charging side and that one for the switch side ah. Dunk. let's pick a lump of battery Looks like lithium ions, 18650. I'm going handheld here, so forgive the wobbliness. First thing I see is opening these cases. These patches of wet. This is obviously some water ingress. Doesn't help. Quite a bit of water in there. Let's see how this paper's disintegrated. I'll measure the battery pack itself by passing the BMS. So it's positive on the pack. So the negative. Oh, 20 volts. So there is some life in it. This appears to be a 36 volt battery. So looking seems to be uh, 10 banks, 10 banks of 5, so 10S5P configuration. What I'll do, I'll bring in the meter and I'll measure each bank. There's probably one or two dead banks in there. I'll do that off camera and I'll, and I'll write it down. Now I've tested all those banks, even the rusty ones. And the results are in. 2.4 up to 2.9, lows being 2.2, 2.3 volts. I'm just wondering now whether this will accept the charge. I wouldn't have thought so because the voltages are low, 2.2 volts. Probably the BMS wouldn't allow a charge. I'll have a fiddle and see what I can do. I'm going to attempt to charge this. I'm going to use uh, my boost converter uh, from 12 up to 42 volts. It says on 40 at the moment. As is, I haven't changed anything. Rusty cells and all. Now this shouldn't work with the voltage being so low. It's worth a try. Is it on 40 volts? Half an amp. Yeah, that's good. Straight up to 40 volts. And no current. Didn't expect it to work and it didn't. Let's look for a plan B. 
Now plan B is, frankly, a pain in the ass. I'm going to have to attach a power supply to each bank in turn and try and get them up to about 3 to 3.5 volts, if at all possible. And do each bank separately, so that means 10 separate charges. I've attached wires to one of these groups, this top one here. So red to positive side, black to negative side. And I've hooked it up to the radio control charger. Let's see if that will charge from 2.5 volts. Maybe, maybe not. Set it for single cell, 3.6 volts, 2.5 volts will be fine. See if we get an error message. Oh. One cell, one cell, one series. Starts from 2.6 volts, 2.9, yes, and increasing. I probably should have started with these um, rusty ones down there but that may only be some surface rust maybe the cells are okay they're all showing about the same voltage near enough now I've had that charging for about 15-20 minutes different settings and it's just come up to 3.7 volts I'm going to stop it there Instead of charging it, um, all of these are up to full. Just up to 3.7, that'll allow them to drop a little bit, as long as they're above 3 volts. When they're rested, they should be fine. So then one, nine to go. <laughs> Say hello. Oh, this cat sat on my shoulder. Wait. Wait, this way. This way. You see a cat's ass. There's no peace to be had, is there? <laughs> Rub a dub dub. Rub a dub dub. <laughs> yeah. Stop. 3.71. Then eight out of those ten banks, but one. So this one here is proving to be awkward. It's about 2.3 volts. Uh, charger won't have it. It's probably a threshold of 2.5 volts. So I have to improvise. I'll hook it up to my separate power supply here. I'll set that in about four volts ish. Maybe 3.7, it's not very fine. Keep the RC charger. Turn the current down a bit. Let's see if this will do the trick. Or it'll blow up in my face. Three one amps. Let's see if we can bring the current up. The other one was about two and a half amps. I get that's about two. Try and bring that up to three point seven volts. That's only been on about three or four minutes. And the voltage is climbing. If I switch that off and get it quickly onto the RC charger. I'd rather do it through the charger. Some more control. Here we go. Now it's over three volts. This will charge it up. At last, it's taken me hours. That was to get to 3.7 uh, all 10 banks. Let's see if we can check voltage. There's a 
going to switch off again, is it? 33 and a half volts, happy with that. This is about 3.3 .3 volts and holding per group. Next thing to do would be to see if the whole pack takes a charge through the BMS. I thought I heard something go beep. I've got a light on there and the switch as well. That should be on, that should be off. So same procedure as the initial attempt yesterday. 2.1 into the charging jack charging port set on 2 amps and 42 volts go taking any current at all oh, switch off again Still not taking any current. Do I need to switch it off? It made no difference. Damn. I'll look into the current path of this, see if there's any problems there. That doesn't help, does it? I'm looking at the charger fuse. That's open. I'll just test that to show you. No continuity. That's a 10 amp fuse. I don't know why that's blown. I'll just have a quick look around, see if there's anything obviously short, anything like that. And then I'll just replace the fuse and try again. There's nothing obvious there that would cause that fuse to blow, so I put a new one in. Where's the old one? There's a big black skid mark on the dead shorts. So maybe they just short the output jack there. So, part three. Let's try again. Try again. 42 volts, 2 amp. Ah. Amp. Currently on thirty five volts. I've set on two amp because the majority of these chargers are forty two volts and two amp. So I'm just trying to replicate it. All being well and no flames, that should take a few hours. That's good enough for me, I think. I'll take that as being charged. Turn that off. Let me see if I can measure some indiv individual cell groups, especially the the rusty ones. Let's go down the bottom. It works better that way. leave that until tomorrow let it rest check the voltage then hopefully do a discharge test so I'm looking for between 14 42 switch on oh, 40.5 volts Now I could just put this back together and hope for the best, but I'd rather do a discharge test on it first. And to do a good discharge test on this, I'll need a big resistor, so 42 volts, and I'll discharge it at about 10 amps. Uh, so it's going to be 420 watt resistor, anyone? 
Oh, I'll, I'll show you my setup. Nichrome wire wrapped around a piece of wood. So I can tap that off. Hopefully to get about 10 amps. It's in the buckets of the old aqueous cooling solution. Otherwise known as tap water. Flames on fury. Let's try, let's try there. 35 amp, too much. Let's try, let's try there. 11, yeah, that'll do. Gonna get that to hold on to it. So it's 11 amps. <coughs> Starting time of 1525. See the steam coming off this bucket of water. Wow. Some water's going through there. That's been running for about half an hour. Just over half an hour. And it should up to 10 amps. Check the rusty ones. 3.4 volts. This one up. I've checked all of these cells after taking it off the load and they all seem to come to the same value they're all about 3.63 volts just a random other one so it looks like this customer's been lucky that's been recovered to be honest I'd much rather do a recovery job on a battery pack like this than make a new one from scratch so these are probably um, a customised item that you can't buy. So all that remains for me to do is to put some fresh paper on this and clean them up a little bit. And some new shrink wrap. It's nearly back together. There's lots of faff. I mean, there's not much free space here. I'm getting the output port back in place. That was an absolute nightmare to get it back together. No room. Everything's so tight in there. As soon as you close one side of the screws, another side pops open and ah Not to mention this thing. That did spring when it came to me. It doesn't spring anymore. I hate springs. So the customer can do it himself if he wants. The last thing I need to do on this is to source a charger for it and test it before sending it back to the customer. So that's it from me on this one. If that's been useful or interesting in any way, just give me a thumbs down, thumbs up, like, don't like, hates. But don't forget the kebab. <laughs>